This video shows how we use our security toolbox for Android to audit a few different apps for malware. The first app is called ConnectBotBad, a modified version of a popular SSH client for Android. The audit starts by running the dashboard, which automatically computes results for properties, smells, and violations of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. A property is something the analyst should be aware of, but doesn't necessarily imply malware. A smell is a stronger heuristic that demands a good justification when detected. The dashboard is also responsible for running any prerequisite analyses such as running the type inference or XML resource indexers. Right now the analyst is inspecting the Android Design Context property, which performs intent resolution to discover how activities, services, and broadcast receivers interact in the application. A good starting point for an audit is to take a look at the application manifest. This application requests a lot of permissions. Let's figure out where the application is using these permissions. The Permission Usage view allows us to inspect direct calls to permission-protected APIs and browse those permissions by permission groups or protection levels. For any application uses of permission-protected APIs, such as this call to the Vibrate method, we can use Atlas's built-in source correspondence to jump to the relevant source code. It looks like this application is overprivileged, but before we can make that determination, we must look for indirect uses of permissions through reflection, native code, or shell processes. There doesn't appear to be any permission abuse through reflection, but we did find some code that is explicitly disabling checks for network activity on the main thread. We better make a note of that. Notice that the dashboard is automatically logging our audit steps. We can even color the code in this work item and refer to it by color later. Coloring program artifacts is a handy way to quickly add and remove artifacts to a logical set during an audit. It can also help us keep track of where we've been and to mark program subsystems that might at first seem unrelated. Next up on our list is to inspect uses of native code. After some time auditing native code, the analyst is convinced there are no permission abuses and everything is on the level, so he marks the work item as reviewed to hide it from the task list. Finally, we will inspect uses of shell processes in the application. Here we see the shell process is executed, but the process string is located in the Android XML resources. Since the XML resource indexer has already added program elements contained in the XML, our data flows will now include the value bound to the resource identifier at runtime. The process command is invoking the local system shell and passing its inputs and outputs to the gobble stream method. We also see that the XML resources contain an unknown IP address. Upon inspecting the method, we see it's a simple stream forwarder. Since this activity occurs in the onCreate method of the wizard activity for displaying the EULA, we could probably stop our audit here. But let's keep going just for fun. After taking some notes about the reverse TCP shell the analyst found, he decides he better take a better look at the rest of the application's uses of the internet permission. There are a few uses of URL connections in the SSH class, but this is probably to be expected with an SSH client. The analyst decides to cross-reference the results of a smell that looks for all valid URIs in an application, including the XML resources. While the detection script for finding URIs might be simple, the ability to quickly cross-correlate information during an audit is invaluable. Sure enough, the analyst finds a few different IP addresses and a URL that looks new to him. He jumps to the live artloo.com URL, which is obviously evil since it spells ultraevil.com spelled backwards, but in a serious audit we would need to verify why the URL exists and what information is flowing to the URL at runtime. A forward data flow quickly brings us to some code that appears to be running in the background to leak the hostname, username, and password to the malicious URL after successful SSH authentication. If we had approached from the other direction, we find that the reverse data flow graph is a little bit complicated. Instead, we might employ a targeted symbolic analysis to resolve the potential runtime values of the URL. Okay, I think we found enough malware in this application. Let's look at a breakdown of the time we've spent on our audit, as recorded by our AuditMon utility. Since AuditMon is recording the human interactions with the program artifacts through source files and program graphs, we can literally rewind our audit. Let's look at what we audited just a few minutes ago. That's right, we were looking at the background thread that leaks login credentials. Okay, that was really an ideal audit. The malware was easy, and the analyst found a lot of good leads early on. The reality is that we have to iterate through John Boyd's OODA loop of observe, orient, decide, and act several times throughout an audit. But the key point is that the security toolbox helps us iterate through that loop faster, which is what determines success. This app is from the APAC program and contained malware written in a custom programming language that was run by an embedded compiler inside the application. It took 12 hours to ultimately decipher. Oh, and one more thing. Since Atlas provides nearly identical program graphs for bytecode as it does for source code, we can use our same analysis scripts for applications we don't have source to audit. Here's the results of a script that found a high priority SMS blocker in a malware found in the wild. Thanks for watching.